Making Farm Life Happy An Indiana Farmer's Daughter Tells How to Help Home Life Miss Jenny E. Hooker, of McCutcheonville, Indiana, received a prize of $300 from the Cosmopolitan magazine for the best essay on how to make farm life attractive. Here is an abstract of her paper. Young people leave the farm because their rural homes are often unattractive and lacking in social and educational privileges. They have mistaken ideas of the pleasures of city life and of the labor connected with stores and factories. On the other hand, while farming is an honorable, healthful and comparatively independent pursuit, it has its needs. If the farm life, says an essayist, is to be made thoroughly attractive, if it is to be raised to the exalted position it merits, it will be necessary first, to lessen the task work of farming, second, to raise maximum crops and profits, third, to surround the work with intellectual progress, not forgetting for a single moment to properly appreciate the honorable position of the farmer and the community, and last, and by no means least, make the home not only attractive in appearance, but a place wherein dwells the spirit of harmony. Labor-saving inventions have lightened the work of farmers more than that of their wives. Too often the wife and mother is a poor, overworked creature, whose line of vision seldom extends beyond the four walls of her home, vainly endeavoring to furnish the table and cover other necessary expenses of the house with the price of butter, eggs, and poultry. Women on the farm are not given the full advantage of sewing machines, knitting machines, patent churns, and washing machines. Girls on the farm should be paid for their work. The raising of poultry is more profitable and agreeable than the care of milk and butter. Women on the farm should cultivate reading clubs, good books, and periodicals. The home should be made attractive with interesting literature and simple, tasteful decorations. Concerts and lectures in the neighborhood should be attended. Music should be cultivated, instrumental if possible, vocal in any case. Books and music may be had by the humblest farmer who ever walked between the plow handles, and combined with those two blessings is the home influence, which cannot occupy neutral ground, but must be either a blessing or a curse. By all means, then, let there be domestic amusements, fireside pleasure which, even though they be quiet and simple, shall make our rural home happy, and not leave it an unpleasant place which will oblige the youthful spirit to look elsewhere for joy. The home should be a place of cheerfulness and unselfishness, and where the rights of the humblest are respected. In too many farm households the father never unbends, the mother never feels well enough to enjoy any pleasures, however innocent and simple they may be. From such a circle, the younger members are apt to break away. The boy on the farm has often little time to himself. He is put in harness young, and is expected to rest from regular labor by running errands for everybody. It is not easy to keep a boy treated thus on the farm after he gets large enough to shift for himself. The better way would be to give him light tasks, to praise him for honest effort, to teach him the use of money, and to encourage him in little business ventures of his own. A small share in the crops on a patch of ground for himself will not be amiss. A pleasant room adds to his contentment, and if he can have a pony or horse, he might be reckoned even happy. Will young people cared for in this fashion leave the farm? Bismarck Tribune Bismarck, North Dakota May 27, 1891